So when I originally started this, I was using strings as references, which is, it's a, it's a way of doing it. That's, let's put it that way. Using the string as a way to call up the, the particular weapon. It's, it's, I, I don't know. Listen, I'm not a, um, not like a software engineer, so I don't know how bad that is. But in my opinion, it was like just okay. And then in hindsight, looking back, it was not the right decision like in terms of the architecture for the project because ultimately what my goal was for this particular template was that like it was a starting point. And so there's no there's no way of like controlling, you know, the way that you pick up weapons. It's It was infinite and there was no way of like managing that outside of just passing a string reference into the function for pick up weapon, right? So it made it difficult if you wanted to add a inventory. It made it difficult if you wanted to control the number of um, weapons that you held and all these other things that people want to add to their game. You're not going to put it in the template because, you know, you don't know what people want to do, but you need to provide like a good starting point, especially if there's a lot of beginners downloading it. Um, and so what I've done at the moment is change it so that there's not only a weapon resource, like you create a resource for your weapon, but you also have weapon slots and you can define how many you have. So if we go to the weapon manager now, you've got max weapons and the weapon stack, I probably want to change that variable name because now it's just going to be, I think maybe it needs to change because right now it's just the number of weapons that you have and we don't need the weapon list. I'm pretty sure that's not even in use anymore because it doesn't matter anymore how many weapons are in the game because you pass that resource to the manager when you pick up the weapon. So it doesn't need to know about all the weapons that exist anymore, which is, I think, an improvement, right? So we've created a weapon. Having it so that the weapon manager didn't control, didn't also like have access to all the weapon resources. One of the reasons I decided to do that is because resources are, I don't know what the right word is, so basically this little part here where it says that um, that they're loaded from the disk and it's always the same reference. It basically means that like you can't have multiple instances of resources. It just doesn't work that way. So um, it's funny because like when I started this whole journey like a year ago, I would have been like, you know, there's an argument for using a node instead of a resource for a weapon. Like if it's a node, then you can have multiple instances of it, which it just means you need to be loading in a lot of nodes. And so like in a way it's more resource, resource int intensive to use classes for your weapons, but you get the benefit of not having to worry about how much ammo is on your resource. Yes. Uh, no, resources aren't static data. That's part of the problem, right? So like, what I was trying to get to, I got a bit lost there, um, is that if you have a weapon resource and it's the weapon you're using and also there's a weapon on the ground that has that resource, when you use ammo, it's going to tick down on both of those resources. It's the same resource, that's the thing. So you need a separate thing that is not referenced. So essentially that's why I've got this weapon slot which holds the weapon resource and also tracks the ammo because the weapon resource can't track the ammo anymore since it can exist in multiple locations. It's more of a way of saying, these are all the things that it does, the damage it does, the, you know, the things it needs to load into the world when it takes a shot, when you drop it, all that kind of stuff. But current ammo, reserve ammo, probably some other things as they go along aren't possible to be in there anymore. So um, right now, these are the only two variables I have in the weapon slot. I mean, yeah, you, what you want them to be is unique. So like you can duplicate them, but then like this whole exercise becomes pointless. You know? Yeah. It's like if you are, if you can, you can go weapon resource load dot duplicate or something like that, and it will create a unique version, but then you can't um, check them to see if they're the same. So like, 
So this is passing in the rigid body and we're getting the slot body dot weapon. So if you were just passing in the resource and you made it unique because you didn't want the ammo to be tracked across both the one on the ground and the one in your hand because obviously you don't want that, um, then you would no longer be able to check if slot dot weapon is equal to weapon slot dot weapon to see if you already have it, right? You'd have to think of a different way. Maybe you could check the name, maybe you could have an ID, something like that, but you still need a way to check, you know, I don't know, like there's a lot of extra stuff. At that point, you might as well just use classes because it's gonna be easier for you. So sticking with resources for now, there's just a couple of extra steps that we have to go through. And I still think it's better because the, um, the weapon slot can be a resource and this is just lighter in general for now. And if I want to make one with classes, I'd just do it from scratch, from scratch. Like, you know, I just, I just wouldn't use this project if I wanted to switch to using classes for weapons, which I used to do like two years ago, which worked fine to be honest, but there are some things that you have to overcome with that as well. So, you know, there's benefits and limitations to both. Um, but I think this is okay 